everybody, welcome back. We are here with Darling in the Franks, episode 17, and um, yeah, I already watched it. I already watched it, but the recording fucked up because OBS stands for uh, Open Broadcast Shit, um, and it basically the video was just... It was basically it was unwatchable. There's no way I was gonna upload something with that horrible of quality. Uh, if you want to know what it was like, here's a little snippet of what it was like. All right, everybody, welcome back. We're here with some more darling in the Franks episode 17. Last episode, we were getting a little bit of a little little Costco BJ sample of uh, the the parasites or some of our main or the main group, our main group. But yeah, it was basically like that for the whole video like throughout the whole video and i didn't notice uh i didn't i didn't notice until i, I finished it and i put it in my editor and in my editor it just it was just so bad there's no way i was gonna upload something like that so i thought you know i can't just not put out a reaction um but thing is is i already watched it so there's gonna be no reaction so instead i'm just kind of gonna i'm gonna kind of you know skim through the the episode go over some of the highlights um, I guess you could call this a review. Maybe we'll call it an episode review. All right, instead of a reaction, we'll call it a review. So, anyways, uh, just to recap what happened last episode. Basically, we got a, a little Costco BJ sample, little glimpse of uh, of these kids. Pretty much, they're starting to revolt or go against Papa. They're or they're they're, they're, they're starting to have doubts. But then later on in the episode, you see the nines. They actually uh. Uh, they actually pop up later on, as you can see, Dickhole. That's what I call them throughout the episode. I call him Dickhole. I nicknamed him Dickhole because he's a Dickhole. Every time I think of Dickhole or Asshole, his face pops up in my mind. Anyways, Dickhole shows up with this crew, and they basically invade uh, their space. They, they the um, uh, what do they call it? Squad Thirteen basically. It, it sort of quote quote end quote restores their hope. Of um, uh, of Papa, basically. Um, I said take a shot every time I said basically. <laughs> um, anyways, um, it restored their hope for uh, or their belief in Papa. Uh, the, it sort of refreshes them because they're like, oh, Papa didn't didn't forget about us. You know, he just, he still does care about us. But then you can sort of tell, like as they're staying there, that there's there's more. There's more to it than them just, you know, just randomly showing up and saying, "Oh, Papa still care cares about you." Um, they're they uh, they go through it, and Dickhole is starting to be a dickhole towards uh, Zero Two. Um, they go through this little thing. It's a nice little little scene between Hero and Zero Two that they have here. Um, it, it's cool because you never really see animes um, elevate the relationship of a couple. I mean, you see. A char you see two characters become couples, but then they're never their relationship isn't you know elevated after that because usually you know they become couples at the at the the end of the series you know most of the time, so it's it's kind of cool to see that like you know oh they have like a little date in the room and they're drawing and whatnot it, it it's pretty cool to, to to see the to see the, the the relationship grow you know what I'm saying so we go we go on with the episode and. Base, what happens is um, uh, Kokoro bumps into a green-haired girl here and she drops the, the childbirth book that she stole or took from the, um, the old human civilization. And he finds out about it uh, pretty much and they, um, he approaches, uh, he approaches um, or actually before he approaches them, Kokoro, <laughs> Kokoro starts to get a little, uh, starts to get a little touchy feely with our boy Mitsuru here. She starts uh, patting him, pats him at first, and then it goes down to the shoulder, and then the chest, and then she slowly starts to, uh, starts to um, unzip uh, his his shirt, and uh, things get a little, uh, things get a little skin ship, and then, <laughs> and then he. <laughs> And then he walks in, he walks in, uh, and it's almost like your dad catching you while you're watching porn. That's basically what it, what it is. Again, every time I say basically, I, I challenge you guys, every time I say basically, take a shot. 
And then we get a cool little scene between Hiro and Mitsuru. Um, another cool thing that they did because usually when um, when you're building a side character or you see most of the time it's animes. Uh, when an anime is building a side character, as soon as that side character's arc finishes, um, the character, you know, takes a takes sort of a background, you know, uh, what, what would you call that? It, 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 the side character basically becomes just wallpaper to the other character. So it's kind of cool to see that um, that Hiro and uh, Mitsuru, or, or, or to see a conversation between them, because again, you're elevating that, that relationship between them, or you're, you're, you're giving that, that audience the, the sense that, you know, the, the, these guys really uh, are friends. You know, it's not just... It feel it feels more more genuine. It feels more realistic, like that. You know, it doesn't just feel like, you know, we're we're, we're having a book read to us. You know, so we go on with that, and this is where um, the nines approach Squad Thirteen, and they basically argue, and they <laughs> they pretty much put down Kokoro for wanting to have a baby because she wants. She says she says it that she says she wants to have a baby. They they approach her about the book and whatnot, and. A uh, dickhole calls her disgusting, and then we go into this sort of this sort of little um, this uh, little what would you call this this sort of ah I don't know what to, what would you call it like a like a the, theology kind of thing or this sort of this this kind of thing where where you start questioning or you, you start questioning like humanity right or he he at least dickhole starts questioning humanity he says. Uh, um, he, he's pretty much saying that, like, why the fuck should we reproduce, you know? Why should we care about these extra emotions and whatnot, you know? It's basically useless. Why would we need them to survive? And then, you know, it, it goes on about that, you know, Kokoro wants to have babies. She, she wants to stay true to her emotions and, and whatnot. And uh, that's, 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 that's what she's explaining here. And then obviously he calls it ridiculous, and then he goes on about that. Like he goes on about like genders too, something about like um, we'll have to go back to conforming to one gender and, and whatnot. I don't know what that's about. And then it all, and then Dicko gets what he deserves. Like Ikido goes up and slaps the fuck out of him. Like he, like this right here, he deserves that. I really wish she did a lot more, like tear off his dick or something like that, but she didn't. But you know that, that's enough to hold me over for now. And um, the thing that really got me here was here. Like, I want to take a little bit of time to, you know, go through this. Because they're arguing, they're arguing with Coke. Not, I want to say arguing, right? I want to say arguing, they're more, um, it's more like a, like a, like a, <laughs> like a family meeting. Like a family meeting and Kokoro and Nana are going at it. And um, Kokoro is going at her with, you know, these hard-hitting questions. She's like... Um, I want to reproduce or um, she, she's questioning Nana like why do we have these body parts and we actually find out that the sexual reproduction body parts or sexual reproduction organs um, are actually needed so that they could pilot the France which is interesting that's another like that is a piece of lore that is an interesting piece of lore and Kokoro starts throwing these hard-headed questions and she gets to the final question and she she asks um, why do we still feel emotions then? Like here, what about these feelings then? You know, why do why do we still have emotions? And this triggers Nana hard. This triggers Nana hard. Now I I did this in my reaction. I'm gonna do it here. Pause right here. This to me, looking at it a second time now or uh, third time now, uh, looking at it for a third time, it looks like um, they're showing a sort of Costco BJ sample or a little glimpse of Nana in a, in a Frank's. Um, I could be wrong. Could be something else, but it looks like Nana and a Franks to me, um, and it triggers it triggers Nana like that. Those that line triggered Nana hard, like she looked like she about to go hollow for him. So this makes me question: like, did Nana have feelings for somebody, or did she sexually reproduce with somebody? Right. So that's what was going through my head throughout the reaction, and and then Dickhole walks in. So not or not Nana. Um, Kokoro walks out. Dickhole walks in, and he, he talks about emotional indoctrination. Like, what? These two went through emotional indoctrination? So, Darling in the Franks is, is adding layers upon layers of just lore. It's, it's absolutely crazy. So, we go on, 
And then Doctor talks about intriguing data. So it pretty much like or not 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 that line. It's he talks about right here. Talks about no before. Where is it at? He he's basically he he, he talks about like like to me, okay, so the way the way the doctor was talking, it made me feel like none of them, none of these guys are human, um, save for Papa and maybe a few of the scientists or the, the, the people that are up there with Papa sitting in the chairs and shit, like it's Organization 13 from Kingdom Hearts or some shit. Um, uh, except for that small group of people, it seems like, or it seems to me that Papa... Is the only like group that's human. My phone is ringing. Give me a second. All right. So anyway, sorry. I had to take a call. <laughs> um, I totally forgot what I was going. I totally forgot my t train of thought. But um, moving on, the episode uh, we actually get to the uh, Klaxosaur Queen, and mm, I'm assuming. Okay, so I'm assuming like these guys are humans. Um, but again, I'm starting to question who is a human and. You know, um, what the fuck is a parasite or what are the parasites, right? So, they, they're they talking about, oh, the humans and collective source have waged war, spanning close to blah, 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 century, blah, 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 war, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, they, they, they approach um, said queen of Klaxosaurs and she sends out, so, or she's speaking. They're saying she's speaking, but to me, this looks like she's, she's openly whooping ass. Um, so they're, they're, they want to, to have peace, at least from what I'm getting, they, they want, they want peace between humans and Klaxosaurs. Obviously to me, it sounds like a bunch of bullshit. Um, it seems like they want her to, like the, the Klaxosaur queen to surrender. And then Klaxosaur queen attempts to, uh, brutally murder, a uh, midget boy. Uh, Midget Boy, I thought for a second I thought Midget Boy didn't need a Franks, but uh, apparently he needed one there because he got fucking destroyed. Um, but Midget Boy falls and then he starts to shit his balls out of his asshole. And he's like, no, 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 I just wanted, I came here to ask you to surrender. And then his head comes off and then we get a badass scene of the Cla Claxo Sword Queen, which is badass, you know, to say the least. So... Um, here we get we actually get a pretty um, we get a much better look at the Klexus or Queen and she looks a lot like Zero too, um, a lot like Zero too. I also forgot to mention that uh, Hero is actually growing horns. Um, just a little thing there here, just just a, just a little small thing to throw into there. But um, she looks a lot like Zero too. I don't know if there is actually a connection between the two. Um, uh, no pun intended, but we will. We will see. I've got a feeling there, there, there is going to be, but um, yeah, that's there probably is a connection between her and Zero too. Um, another thing is, is they're making out, um, they're making out the queen to be the main villain, but um, I've got a feeling that uh, Papa is the actual main villain. But we'll, we'll we'll get into that later on, and then we get into this. Um, we go back to Squad 13, and then they, they, they're starting to question, or they're starting to, um, I guess you could say, th they're, they're talking about, like, you know, th their, their emotions, you know, their feelings towards one another, and then we get, um, we get a, <laughs> we get a scene about, or, no, we get a scene about, we get a scene for Mitsuru and Kokoro, and, um, this goes on, and they start talking, and then um, we got a little hug fest going on, um, and then uh, yeah, yeah, this this right here happens. Uh, she that right there happens, and the ship sails, and uh, that's the second ship that has sailed this series, and. Uh, not only does the ship, sh not only does the ship sail, the ship also lands. The ship, the the ship finds land. The ship, the ship definitely hit the jackpot. Like it, it found, it did find just land. It found the treasure, 
and it dug the treasure. <laughs> so anyways, we got Kokoro Mitsuru. So now we got the Hero 2 ship, and now I, I can't think of a ship name for Kokoro Mitsuru. Kitsuru? Uh, Mokuro? I don't know, dude. Well, well I I'll think of something later on, but she gets what she wants, which is to have a baby, and I'm sure she felt really good about it. And I'm sure Mitsuru did too. Um, but yeah, they it's obvious they went through sexual reproduction. So going from spot 13 back to this, they're talking about the Klaxosaurus princess and her path of annihilation. And then uh, Dick Hole pops up in front of Papa. So this makes me think, or I, I was thinking this throughout the whole episode. Uh, I got a feeling Dick Hole knows a lot more than we really think like i've got a feeling that um that he is he's either he's either like pure parasite or not pure parasite he's some kind of project or experiment or some special experiment that the doctor was working on um or he is human but i don't know uh my ideas are jumbled all over the place because there's just so much happening in this episode but um, that's pretty much it. But this episode, this episode was really good. Um, lots of content, uh, content, lots of content packed into one episode, and it was still very well paced. Whoever the writer is, I gotta give you a round of applause. And um, I apologize for you know pretty much no reactions. Um, not my fault. The video fucked up. Blame it that. Blame it on um, open broadcast shit. Um, but we will be back next week. Hopefully, I could. <laughs> Hopefully we don't fuck up that video.